Greeting Earthlings, if you follow the channel, you know that we love all things Apollo, and that during our last visit to Steve Jervetson's amazing space collection, we were given the opportunity to take two holy boxes of Apollo electronics to our lab. These are the boxes that brought you voice, data and live TV from the moon and should be early masterpieces of microwave electronics, the blackest of black arts in analog electronics. We explained how the S-band system works and looked at the innards of the power amplifier and the transponder in episodes 1 to 3. We then started our transponder power-up preparations in episode 4. To our delight, the power control relay still clicked after 50 years and we think we found all the 120 volts, 400 hertz power connections. Even better, we got what we think is part of the original NASA test setup for the system. After a bit of reverse engineering, we powered up the transponder mount and it lit up partially. Okay, so it has... this lamp doesn't work. FM... Uh, Ken and Mike have been hard at it. We understand a lot better how it works. You, you want to demonstrate, uh, Ken? So one of the puzzles was this drawer here, which is empty. It's empty except for some cut-off coaxial cables going into it. It also has a mystery connector here. Right. Um, but we figured what we figured out is that the transponder fits in there nicely. So I'll just instead of moving the whole transponder, I'll just move the case. The transponder fits in this compartment. These coaxial cables would plug into the connectors on the transponder. So after you put the transponder in here, it closes up and then it has two, two latches. So it then latches into this is your, your working position. Right, and that's, that so had us so flustered because we couldn't find out why there was a connector that was buried in there. But when you're testing, yeah. you are half the way out like this. So, so you, you don't close it all the way because you need room for the cables. Right, right, right. And my other theory is that for cooling, it would be mounted on a, a glycol plate. Mm -hmm. And you'd put um, cooling glycol and then the, the pipes would come out the holes in the, in the back of the box here. So then the signals from the transponder that go into this connector um, they have breakouts here. Oh yeah. So you have your static phase error, some telemetry signals, you've got the temperature thermistor, and AGC is your um, automatic gain control, yes, not it's Apollo guidance computer. Then there's these three little timers so you can tell how long each of the amp amplifiers has been running for. These, these buttons sort of mirror uh, circuit breakers in the command module. So inside the transponder power supplies, there's also relays. So so these buttons will flip the relay into the on or off position for each of those three power supplies. Yeah. They pretty much exactly match the switches on the command module yeah. uh, panels. Um, and, and what happens if you try to turn on both PM powers at the same time? It gets angry and turns off all the lights on you. <laughs> yeah, can't can have both yeah. of the PMs turned on at the same time. Can't so do it, it. it, it uh, protects you against that. Yep. Is more, there's an IF side and there's an RF side. So the RF side, we figured it out, those actually go to other boxes. So this is to test the transmit output. There's two outputs. We'd connect one of the PM over here and one of the FM over here. And they go into these boxes. One of them being detached, actually. There was another box, we don't know what it is, either a T or an, an attenuator. Mainly, the signal goes in. There's lots of attenuation so that simulates your loss in transmission. So you don't overwhelm the receiver that's now just next door and cabled instead of having the, the antenna transmission. Goes back out. But there's another branch that comes here, goes to this thing, which is connected to the turny thing in the front. And this creates a phase, uh, a reflection with a given phase. This long contraption is actually introducing calibrated back reflections, simulating a less than ideal impedance matching from the equipment downstream, and turning the crank will change the angle of the reflection. This is used to test the stability of the transmitter against back reflections at random distances 
that will inevitably occur once the system is fully assembled. So that, that leaves everything explained except those little ones and then uh, master can figure those ones out. This is for the subcarrier's input and outputs connected to a mystery box in the back, but it did not resist scan for very long. The little amplifier signal goes through a blocking capacitor, two transistors for amplifying, and then the output goes through another blocking capacitor. And, and, and that's in that little box over yeah. here. Those come out here. Uh, so we have the input for the FM, which has the TV signal on it, the second input for the FM, which has the other data on it, and you have the input for the PM, which comes from another bulk. Uh, oh, and then we uh, we have to fix, we have to fix something. Hey, do, do I turn off the power before I reach in? Oh, okay, you're picky. <laughs> 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 All right, so we know that there has been a modification. So, so there's this cable here that's just sort of hanging loose. Yeah. And we figured out from the label that it connects to the subcarrier channel test point here. You know, this cable, you can tell it just it doesn't have a real label. This was yeah, they reused aftermarket the, modification. They, <laughs> they just reused the port. So this to cable add some nitro. Yeah. Okay. This so. cable just goes back on here where it belongs. All right. And there we go. All right. And so it's, it's repaired. Restored. All right. So we think we understand it pretty well, right? We have a few... Yeah, this I don't, I don't, pretty much makes sense now. I, I don't think you, you, you need the protection glasses. I think it's fine, it won't explode. Well, <laughs> you know, with those gyroscopes around here, you just <laughs> never know. <laughs> we received our military connectors and Mike spent a lot of time making the wire harnesses armed with a mean crimping tool that did wonders. Yeah, this this has, you know, it has, um, oops, it has different uh, different barrel sizes to choose from, and then you select your wire gauge on this thing, and then you just sort of drop the um, drop the contact into this little hole, push the wire in, and then squeeze it, and it'll. <laughs> It'll, uh, yeah, the, yeah, the, 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 there is an investment <laughs> in tooling required, but yes. then it goes really well. Yeah. I think the lettering on these is written so close. Mike, I think the moment has come. About to power on the transponder for the first time. Take a look at the frequencies coming out, make sure they're right. Yeah, <laughs> that, uh, that's been a long time coming, sadly. About 10 p.m. Yeah. here, everybody's <laughs> gone. Um, but, and we have the stack of RF equipment out here. We have the 400 hertz, uh, three phase, 115 volts. Mm -hmm. On the transponder itself, there is one input that would have come from the antenna, and that's the uplink from Earth. And uh, there are two outputs. The main signal on PM for phase modulation which we are monitoring out here will come in the splitter and we'll both see it on the spectrum spectrumizer and the frequency meter and we expect a signal if everything works correctly at 2.2875 gigahertz and don't worry about the disconnected RF cables we'll take care of that later that's how it came in the box but we're not using it right now Those are such good connectors. And off it goes, and we have the three phases and the ground on the back of my parasitical. Alright, so, and the one and the two. There are lights. There are lights. Alright, and we are off, 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 off. Excellent. We have done everything right. Do you want to measure? Can I turn them on? Yeah, so this is measuring. 351 ohms and I went through all of these buttons and confirmed that that always reads 351 no matter how I flip them around and that is three 1k relay coils in parallel okay so I'm pretty sure I'm hitting all the coils yeah eating a relay okay so the idea is we do 28 volts then we we should hear the relays really yeah and then we can 
measure the resistance between all the phases. Right, and th that. then we can see if we connect them, we are connected to the 400 hertz. Right. And we just do one at a time. And right, sure right, 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 right. So I go draw power. And yeah, so the only way you could check it is go at the back, really, if, if it's not like that. You see the inside of the box of wonders. And we have 28 volts, right? Okay, so I think that checks out. Okay, we added even more stuff. This is current voltage and temperature in some kind of units that we don't know what it will be because it's, it's just a thermistor. So, we switched the rocket to engine mode power. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and one and the two. Right. And a three, and we got 20. Oops, it's over limit. What's happening here? Because I put it over here. There we go. 28 volts. Okay, we have 28 volts. Huh, this measures also 28 volts in the. Well, eye. There's, there's 10 ohms between these two. So oh, I, think you I need to measure over here. Yeah, so that'll get you the voltage across that 10 ohms. There you go. 77 milliamps. Right. So that seems reasonable. We haven't blown anything. We have we have power on the transponder now. Kind okay. of 20 volts on the All right. the close of the relay coil. So then what you want to do? Ah, we, we want to hear a click, right? That's what we want. Yes. Yeah, so hopefully. Are, are, are we going to or not? Yeah, I did hear it. So we want to measure resistance between the phases. When, when it's when these buttons are off, they should be open circuit. Yeah, we should we should have we should have no when no nothing going to the 400 hertz. When we, when we close any one of those three buttons, it should go down to 60 ohms between each pair of phases. Okay, so you go actually you you should measure it at the. Um, oh yeah, measure it every day. Yeah, because this is right now. This has nothing. It's, it's opened up by the relays. Uh, it's okay, production. So, okay. Well, you you holler, okay. and I'll go on the other side. So, uh, going across green and black for starters. Okay, yeah, I got two megs. Two megs. Oh, that's good. And then you should get much less. No, two megs. No change. No change, okay. PM2. No change. Did I reconnect the stuff properly? FM? No change. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. Is it, I'm doing the wrong one. We need transponder AC power on. Oh, yes, they're not connected. All right. Aha. So, th so there is a double whammy here. I'm going to do this. Okay. So and try PM one again. So I am getting. Uh, so I have not. P I don't have PM one. So you should be infinite right now. Two meg. Yeah. Fifty four ohms. Okay. Between green and black, uh, green and red. This fifty four ohms. Black and red. Is. 54 ohms. Okay, so I'm going to turn yourself off. Yeah. And I'm going to turn PM2 off and should get nothing because I don't have the PM2 AC. Okay. Yeah. So, so Still okay, but now I'm going to change to that one. And the okay, light. 54 ohms. Okay, we got uh, it right. And check the other face. 54 ohms. 54 ohms, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to turn. The, re the relay off, so the relay is over here in the transponder, and this is in our machine. Two megs. And I'm going, going to go and do FM, but still without the AC connected. So you should stay at two megs. Okay. Two megs. And now I'm going to connect you. Fifty-four ohms, and then fifty-four and fifty-four. Okay, I'll stay there. I'm going. You should still be at 54. Okay, we need to change one bulb here. Unfortunately, they 
are not the twist lights or mic printed. <laughs> the wonderful extractor. Some of them are kind of tight. You might need to try a couple of them. What? Oh, no, there you, you go. Got it. So I'm going to put it in another. Oh, let's see that works better. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it took us a day to figure out how to remove the light. There you go. Much better. All right. Okay. So now we turn our attention to the three phase power supply, which we know works because we spun a gyro with it. Fine. Uh, but we want to uh, reduce the maximum current so nothing bad happens. We have three phases, 115 volts, it's 400 hertz, and we limited it to really low, half half an amp per phase. And we have a 120 degrees and 240. And we go, and if I do execute, it's all going to be fine. And here are three phases. And I guess I go, right? On, all right. You want to uh, measure 115 volts back there? Make sure this is what we get. 115. 115. 115. Okay. Okay, so Mike's ready to go see if there's power is going to be generated and we're going to turn it briefly on, but uh, I am out of PM, goes in here to my coupler. Uh, I have lots of attenuation because it's 400 milliwatts. So I have 6 dB here and 20 dB there. So I should be at zero milliwatt over here. Uh, and then I have a 20 dBm coupling here that goes to my frequency meter. Okay, well, that's the moment, right? It has probably hasn't worked since 1970 something. So. Yes, PM1. And a one and a two. And a three. Yep, yeah. it's transmitting. 2.2875. Which is, are we, are, we, are we doing the right one? I've only got minus 0.3 on the minus 15. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> but I certainly have, so that's what I should have, 2.875. So, so I've, um, we're transmitting. There we go. Minus 5 PM. Ah, this side is PM1. <laughs> I was okay, <laughs> we found out. Okay, so that's the one thing we needed to find out is which which is PM1, which is PM2. Dan. <laughs> All right. It's minus 15.00 volts on them. <laughs> and okay, it's another one of those perfect things. Uh, oh, yeah. Point oh one. yeah, after 50 years, huh? What what do you think, manufacturer 64, 65, something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, 65, 66. Come on, probably. see it for yourself. <laughs> no, all the power we need. Uh, smack at uh, 2.2875. Right in the middle of the scope. Okay, so I go PM1 off. Punk. I, I leave the PM1 forward AC on, or you want me to turn it off? That should be fine. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We, we're, we're powering up. So, second one, and a one, and a two. Oh! Minus 15.01? This one has something happening. Oh yeah? Yeah. So it has, it's at the right frequency, 2.875, but it has a side, um, it has some uh, funny business in the side bands. So 10, it's 15, 25, 35, 45, 55 dB down, so it probably doesn't matter. Okay, well, they both work. We want to try FM. Okay, so I am now on FM, and so FM should be at a different frequency. It should be, if my notes are correct, at 2.2725, so about 10, 10 megahertz lower. And, okay, FM. Right there, 2.27179. So, uh, but it's plus minus, um, it's plus minus a couple of megahertz. The uh, the FM is not very precise. So we're good. And it should be slightly less powerful by about 10 dB. No, but, but, uh, 
but 6 dB less and it is it's uh, minus 10 dBm so it's it's about uh, 5, 5 dB less than dpm uh, okay so the next step gets really more complicated because we either have to re get it locked right receive something or transmit something and so I, I have my I have my equipment prepared here so <laughs> Well, our cautious power-up went really well. Our Apollo transponder woke up after 50 years in tip-top shape. Our three transmitter carriers came out right on the money. Next step, acquiring a signal from Earth. And that's noticeably more difficult, so we'll leave that for the next episode. See you then!